Nobody's happy about uh, unemployment rates that don't drop and are still at the national average. But uh, it is worth noting that job growth has been pretty strong in Indiana. You can count those working. Um, we added uh, the most jobs last month in 11 years, any month in 11 years. Now, for the last four months, whatever this means, with 2% of America's population, Indiana has added almost 8% of all the jobs added in America. Um, we have recovered essentially the ground lost over the last year, but that leaves an awful lot of ground to make up still. So we just have to hope that these job gains will repeat month after month and perhaps even strengthen. Um, it, is, it is no consolation ever has been to us that we are outperforming the rest of our neighbors, all our neighbors, and most of America. Um, but uh, let's just hope that the seeing more people come back to work as we have now for four straight months in pretty strong fashion is the beginning of a sustained trend. Now secondly, um, uh, as, as was requested by two Indiana congressmen who voted for the Obama health care legislation, we asked the state's longtime actuary, the same firm who's worked for the state for a decade uh, uh, under both uh, Democratic and Republican administrations, to uh, rework the numbers with different assumptions, um, essentially looking for a low-cost uh, estimate. They did that. They assumed a, a very low participation rate in the new health care program and found that the minimum cost of the state would be $2.9 billion. So the range appears to be between $2.9 and $3.6 billion. So it makes absolutely no difference under any scenario. This is going to be a whopping big cost to the taxpayers of Indiana. It's going to crowd out education and other uh, important state functions and or lead to a big tax increase uh, a few years down the line. So uh, the nation has been learning from other sources, seems almost every day, about additional costs both to taxpayers and to the health care uh, system of this bill, um, and uh, now as is being found in state after state, the hidden mandated tax increase at the state level will be very, very large. So um, again, it was a regrettable piece of legislation, but it's the law of the land, and we're working on how best to deal with it to prepare the state for the big, big costs which are coming. Governor, the stock market is down again this morning. It's been down all week the speculation that investors are not confident that the recovery will hold. How concerned are you about that? What implication does that have for these unemployment numbers? I'm real concerned. I have been right along. I've, I've worried that there was more downside risk than upside. Um, what, the, what we're seeing happen in Europe um, can only have negative consequences. Let's hope they're neither too severe nor too prolonged here. Uh, if we needed any more evidence of the dangers of too much government spending and too much government debt, uh, we're having this underscored to us again. And, and uh, it is a menace right here in Indiana. So yes, it's, it's a real concern. And let's just hope that, uh, that the worst doesn't happen. So with regard to health care reform, what, what would you advocate at the moment? Repeal or what should be, are you are you simply trying to inform people? Well, our job here is to deal with this grim reality, these new, all these new costs which the federal government has imposed on the state. If you're asking as a citizen, what do I think, then as I've thought all along, this was exactly the wrong direction to go. And at this point, it would be far better off to repeal this bill, replace it with one based on consumerism um, that uh, empowers and entrusts individuals to post their employers with the government to make health care decisions. But uh, that's very, very different than what this Congress and this administration believe is right. And I don't have a vote anyway. Senator. Should it be a campaign issue this fall? Well, I'll leave that up to the candidates for federal office. But uh, this is pretty sobering news on top of the, on top of the uh, very severe consequences that the bill already clearly is going to have in terms of debt, deficits, uh, higher, not lower, health care costs, less, not more, health care uh, and insurance choices. A very ill-advised piece of legislation, and uh, it's 
certainly it's, it's uh, legitimate for debate. You no. already announced the uh, suspension of enrollment, new enrollments for Healthy Indiana. How much further are you in terms of how the state will be going with this? Not too much further, but we're working on it. Do you know what assumptions were used on the Medicaid enrollment and the new study? And also, could you talk about, I mean, even in the next budget, you're going to have to start preparing for administrative ramping up. And it seems to be pretty unclear at the moment what that even is going to entail. Yeah, it's very unclear. Yeah, we will supply you the assumptions. But uh, across the, I think it's four different classes of, uh, of uh, beneficiaries, if that's the term, uh, they assumed um, participation as high as 85%, as low as 50%. Okay. Um, so again, this is a very cautious assumption. This assumes that hundreds of thousands of people offered something that to them is free. It's not free to the taxpayers, but it's free to them. will say, no thanks, I'd rather pay for it. That's what the congressman asked us to believe will happen. So we took them at their word, and the numbers have been rerun, assuming that low level of participation still costs the state $3 million. So um, again, that's, that's money that won't be available for education or law enforcement or uh, the other functions of state government. Most of the hit will come in a few years. Mm -hmm. So it will fall to others to decide. You slash education, which is half the budget. Uh, you raise taxes or some combination. Is there any way to figure how much the old system was costing us, how much we were losing that way, the current system? Say it again. But when you talk about <clears throat> how much money we're going to lose with health care, and yet if we continue with the system we have now, are we losing yep. money that way as well? Well, the current Medicaid system is a big expenditure of state government, and we have the HIP program for those who don't fit into Medicaid. Um, I think that uh, Indiana's doing a pretty good job, reasonably efficient job, compared to some states, of taking care of those populations. But here we're talking about three to three and a half billion dollars of new additional costs forced on the taxpayers of Indiana by the federal government and the new legislation. A lot of it doesn't, won't even go to take care directly of anybody. It's for administrative costs. They're confiscating the savings we've achieved in our prescription drug program. That'll be taken starting immediately by the federal government. So these are uh, new costs on top of, yes, what is already a major expenditure of state government. With more people being insured, though, there'll be, one would assume, a, less of the, you know, go to the emergency room for every and anything. Have, why haven't we asked Milliman to, you know, make some estimates on savings on that end? Uh, you know, the, my bill in the last uh, couple of weeks, there have been reruns of uh, new analyses that say that this is going to raise health care costs in America. It's not going to reduce them. And, every, you know, people should have seen that. A lot of people made that point in advance. I would just point out to you that by perpetuating and expanding the most expensive features of the American health care system, third-party payment, so it feels mm -hmm. free or cheap to the patient, uh, cost plus reimbursement, so the incentive for the hospital or the doctor or the clinic is to do more, 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 so you can make more, more, more. Instead of going at those, uh, as, as the Indiana HIP plan does, for instance, um, the uh, Obama health care legislation took all that and blew it up even larger. And that's why, as many predicted, you're already seeing independent analyses that say this is going to add jillions of dollars. It's not going to save money in health care. It's going to add whole lot of cost to the system. It's clear that there'll be, the overall, there'll be significantly added costs. But you would, you would acknowledge that there would be some savings because of this. I don't know. I know about the cost. Let me just, let me just say this. If you look at the entire history mm -hmm. of the federal government's involvement in health care, they have always underestimated enormously the cost of Medicare cost seven times more than it was than Americans were originally told to expect. Seven times more. That was one thing that was ironic about the congressman attacking Milliman, and the, the nation's probably leading experts on this subject. Milliman's track record of 
telling Indiana and 14 other states uh, about cost, likely costs has been very accurate. The federal government is the least accurate forecasters around. The Congressman and also Secretary Sebelius have made a couple of additional points saying that there's no reason you have to shut down if that would be an alternative if, uh, if Indiana likes it better, and also arguing that the reimbursement from the federal government would defray a lot of that. What's wrong with that in terms of bringing down that $2.9 billion cost? Uh, a, a very high percentage of people in HIP now will be eligible for Medicaid under the new plan. And uh, I assume they'll all, uh, either all or most of them will want to go there. Instead of having to contribute something, which HIP asks, they'll, have, they'll be uh, asked to contribute nothing, as Medicaid has. On the, uh, you have a decision to make on the third district and when that hold a special mm -hmm. election. Some have said, let's just do it in November to save the money, but you have to weigh that against no representation for yeah. six months. Can you talk about your thought process on that? Yeah. You might be leaning forward. Well, we're going to make this decision in the public interest, and uh, we'll try to make it quickly. But you've just named uh, two, uh, I think the two biggest, uh, uh, let's say, axes of decision that we're, that we're looking at. Uh, it appears from, and we're still checking, that this is, might be a million dollar exercise to have a special election. That's just the direct cost to the counties involved. Um, and you have to weigh that against, as you say, the absence of a congressman for a period of time. But please look, note, the earliest we can hold this election is about the 20th of July. Mm -hmm. There's an August recess. You know how Congress operates. Right, right. They're out for August. They're out for Labor Day. They'll quit in September. And so I've asked somebody to help us try to count the days. It looks like you might only miss maybe 20 days. So I um, appreciate everybody's patience just a few more days while we try to decide what's the, what's the best uh, balancing of these interests. Um, Sounds we, like you're leaning toward November then. Not sure yet. Okay. You know, want to know more precisely about both ends of that, the cost and the, and the likely calendar. Um, but but those are the uh, criteria that we're juggling. Some in the third district have, have suggested that Mark Souter ought to help pay for the cost of the election. Is there, can you envision a circumstance where that might happen? I don't know. It's up to you. Have you the talked timing. to the parties at all about what they want to see um, in terms of the timing of an election? Are you asking for input from them at all? Or are you just Didn't have to. The Democratic yeah. chairman mm -hmm. You know, fouled it off immediately, yeah. so I uh, didn't even have to solicit his view. House Bill 1367, the education bill, was supposed to prevent teacher layoffs and increase class sizes by allowing schools to transfer funds. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of announcements of teacher layoffs. We don't know. We see it every spring. Right. In every spring, even in good times, <coughs> the famous pink slips go out. Every fall, there are more teachers, not fewer. I hope that'll be the case this time. If the school districts uh, will take out the citizens' checklist, they'll find 22 things they can do before they ever have to consider reducing a teaching position. <coughs> Here and there, we're starting to see some of this. We have a, uh, some school districts are beginning to accept the state's offer. Has Portage voted yet? Is that next week? Anybody know? Next week. Portage schools are considering joining the state health plan. I'm told it will save them almost $2 million a year. And that's not that big a school district. And so we're beginning to see some um, districts doing what families do, businesses do, what state government's been doing for five and a half years. And any responsible school the leadership has many, many things and many tools that they can use uh, to avoid reducing teaching positions. And of course, the teachers themselves could help. Uh, as a few uh, have chosen to do. I'd like to ask one more third district question. Does it enter into your thinking at all whether a Republican nominee would be better in a special election or the general? No, it doesn't. You know, this district was gerrymandered by Democrats, really, to crowd a lot of Republican voters into it. You can read it in John Gregg's book. He didn't know it from somewhere else. And so I, I don't know. I, I think it, it'll come down really to the quality of the candidates. Looks like we've got some great people contending uh, for the Republican nomination. I think the combination of a good candidate and what was uh, what our opponents created as a Republican district is uh, you know, augurs well for it, whether it's two elections or one.
It's been suggested that Representative Bohr is your hand-picked Yeah, I don't hand hand pick anybody. I, I've never been involved in a primary, and I'm not going to be involved in this one. Same answer as I've given you dozens of times before. Do you plan to support Rand Paul? By the way, I thought the rumor was I was for stunts. <laughs> I don't make the rumors. I oh, okay. <laughs> Shella makes the rumors. I don't know how it works. It's a division of labor thing, I got Governor, how concerned are you about the reports of uh, problem found at Madison Juvenile Facility, including the one from a former employee about sex parties, abuse, and rat infestation? I don't know anything about that. I heard the, you know, the, about the one at the old facility, which was closed and moved. Um, so I don't know. You'll have to ask uh, the Department of Corrections if there's some, to, some new suggestion. Uh, there are some employees, as I understand it, who are um, not happy with, their new, with new job assignments, and that tends to lead to Back discontent expressed in other ways. Back on the third district, I'm sorry, I, I keep thinking about Bill Costas. Do you draw a distinction between endorsing for convention versus primary? Is that the distinction between those two? Yeah, generally. When the, when the primary voters have a, have a chance, uh, my, my position has consistently been to let them. What, what makes, I mean, the, this is a caucus, it seems more analogous to the convention than the primary. What, what makes it different? I recruited Bill, I mean, uh, John. Take your right. I recruited John. Uh, Encouraged him to run when there wasn't anybody, and then, then uh, competition showed up. We kept hands off after that. The Republican Senate nominee in Kentucky said he thinks the Civil Rights Act shouldn't include a ban on private discrimination by businesses. You're a pretty pro-business guy. Do you agree with Rand Paul on no. that? Well, do you plan to support him or campaign for him? Haven't been asked. Don't expect to go. I confine myself to Indiana and a little bit of duty for that I've been asked to undertake for Republican governors. So. Where might we see you outside Indiana? Not Who's very off, not very many places. I uh, agreed. To, I think I've agreed to spend a day in Ohio for John Kasich, who's running for governor, or someone I've known a long time. See a couple of those. No well, flights to Des Moines yet. You can count on not seeing me there. <laughs> How confident are you that there will be enough money to finish the southern half of I-69? Very confident. Uh, you know, it's, only, it's not a question about money. It's a question of how long it takes to finish. You know, in other words, what portion of the road budgets of um, 2015, 16, 17, 18 will be devoted to that as something else? That'll be someone else's call. But there's no question there's enough, and particularly because of the sensational progress that our people have made, both in terms of speed and in cost reduction. What do you say to the critics who say you're cutting corners on things like median widths and uh, yeah. agent Well, I say we, we're not going to overbuild the road, as, as many roads have been in the past. It's all been totally vetted with the Federal Highway Administration. And it's, uh, you know, these are people who just don't want the road built. Every, right? We all get the joke. And I'm just going to say, you know, it's easy to sit in the affluence of Bloomington or perhaps Indianapolis and say to people in southwest Indiana, I got mine, the heck with you. You stay down there in isolation and, economic, and, and behind uh, economics. But you get south of Bloomington and it is very hard to find anybody who isn't very excited to finally have the economic opportunity that will come with a closer connection to the rest of Indiana and, and markets beyond. When I was down there the other day, there were seven or eight mayors, and almost all Democrats, by the way. Every one of those communities, Littletown, Princeton, Lagovi, Washington, Jasper, Petersburg, people are very excited about the opportunity this is going to bring. And I appreciate that some folks did what wanted to build, but um, uh, that decision was, has been made a long time ago. And uh, it's a worthy project, and we found a cost-effective way to do it, and we went out and found the money to do it. And it's going to happen. Is there going to be money to replace the ever-increasing number of bridges in northwest Indiana that are cracking? Yeah, there will be. And there's going to be an investigation, too. What kind of investigation? Well, we have, in this latest incident, we have a bridge that was only built a few years ago, 2004, I believe. 
and we're checking bridges. There were several others built by the same company, designed by the same company, built by the same company, and built in the very same period. And we're having a close look to see if there are any problems with those. But I've asked uh, uh, for information about the warranty provisions under which those were built. As one thing, it's bad enough when Klein Avenue um, fails on us uh, after 25 or 30 years instead of 50, 60, 70. It's quite another when we have problems with a bridge that was built just yesterday, so to speak. So we're looking. We're not we're sure we're going to uh, take the steps necessary to protect the public and reopen adequate uh, arteries up there. But uh, in this case, uh, I, I'm beginning to be curious about exactly who built what and uh, who was watching it. Is there a warranty on bridges when they are built? I'm, fine. I'm, like I'm that? told that yes, there, were, there probably were some provisions, and uh, I expect to know even in the next day or so what, 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 what remedies we have here, either within the contract or beyond it. I'm guessing it's too early, but have the inspectors pinpointed just why that bridge collapsed? I don't know. They didn't collapse. Right. Nothing has collapsed, but you know, some of them are not or have been found not sufficiently safe, and we always take the, the uh, no-risk option by, uh, by taking traffic off of them under those circumstances. Well, I'm going to handle it for today. Thank you very much.